Um, so yeah, that that will that it seems like this is gonna kind of step in quite nicely uh, following that. Um, I'm working in a slightly more ideological frame as per the keynote last time, but there are economic and political valences that are present uh, and very important. In, uh, what I hope to say, uh, just quickly, um, effectively, what I'm talking about is I created software that instantiates some theoretical stuff that Lendl was talking about in a conference talk over the summer. And uh, this is going to be kind of me hashing out uh, what it is, what it does, and why you should care or not care, uh, as it may be. Um, so, uh, oh, also, the slides you don't really have to pay attention to. I'm kind of doing this, what for me is new, they're kind of like footnotes. So if you want additional information or definitions and stuff, they'll be up there. Uh, the telos of this talk is the description and demonstration of a concept. Oh, actually, I have time there. Good. Uh, <clears throat> originally introduced in Lando Barcello's An Ethics of Oral Ambiguity, the phonomorphism. A phonomorphism is a mapping between sonic events that preserves some features of the sonic structure, minimally composition, uh, composition in the sense of uh, mathematics. For the sake of this talk, we can define the relation such that it preserves the phonetic structure of sound. Thus, in a phrase, a phonomorphism is a morphism where the structures are phonemes. The phonomorphism that I will describe parasitizes, I'll, uh, there's layers there, <laughs> on the epimorphic relation between the lexis and the phonetic structure of English. Oh, I should have changed the slide. The polyvalent lexical signification of a given phoneme, or the different ways to index write a phoneme, allows the sonic structure to be preserved across various lexical instantiations. This allows us to remap the lexical domain through the phonetic into a different lexical range. There are two consequences that diversify the pragmatic content of the lexisonic relation through a phon phonomorphic re-implementation, ally Negaristani. First, recognition through the visual apparatus is confounded by a destabilization of the lexical structure, thereby pushing sonic attenuation to the fore. And second, the combinatoric space of uniquely mapped lexical structures shrinks as implicit lexicalizations of the phonetic structure emerge and are equated. Oh, that's interesting. The effect, in effect, the phonomorphism exploits conceptual scotoma, holes in the visual, human visual scaffolding that informs much of our understanding of the world. We can consider this exploitation as an act of sonic violence, as per Steve Goodman, that damages, and to the degree that the mapping is irreversible, destroys the tradition that pre- and proscribes through a normative utilization of the lexicon. The contingent effect, or collateral damage, that is produced through this sonic violence is instantiated in and amenable to both normative modes of listening and to a conceptual sonic expansion. In effect, the M app which is the name of the software, creates a symmetry-breaking localization that initiates the user into the local horizon through an act of violence and rupture. Uh, that's Negaristani through Chatelet. Phonomorphism is a hybridization of war and art misconstrued simultaneously as war for art's sake and art for war's sake. The wart generates capitalist virtualities through an increased liquidity in untapped future lexisonic commodities that damage the system as much as they grow it or grow in, virtues, in virtue of the damage they commit to it. In Navigate with Extreme Prejudice, Negaristani describes such a viral action as a philosophical commitment, a la Brandom, that initiates a catastrophic change in excess of the temporal origin. Thus, the engineering of the M app described herein is best construed as an act of conceptual violence or catastrophe that aggressively re-territorializes the lexical structure through the instantiation of a discursive localization in the no longer homogeneous continuum. The purpose of this organizing violence following Negaristani's inquiry is the navigation of a space of rules that are, quote, neither laws nor sociocultural conventions, end quote. The rules supersede the sociocultural via the nuos, and yet by treating, quote, the mind as an extreme vector of abstraction, end quote, they can extract, abstract the mind into, and again I quote, social practices and conducts, end quote. End quote. 
Though Negrostandi, Brandom, and Sellers bind this navigation of rules to reason, we take this to be unnecessary. So that's a lot of stuff there. Uh, but some of it's quite fun. Uh, reasons can imply a search for justification or justificationism, uh, in some sense, the search for truth. Whereas rules better impart Imri Lakatosh's notion of sophisticated methodological falsificationism, which is a mouthful, that better describe the navigational abstracting vector. In terms of the M app, the space of rules are instantiated by the commitment we make to the particular sonic structure that we are choosing to preserve. I'm reading fast. <laughs> Here, the phonetic structure, as well as its particular instantiation in the code, there are many possible text to phony mappings that result in different rules and contingencies of those rules. For example, one confusing property about the software uh, is that the sound A or I and the sound I are both mapped to the letter I. Um, the conflation is destructive to the phonetic structure by further collapsing or identifying phonemes that are distinct in North American English. Further decisions are implicitly defined in the MAP's algorithmic procedures that instantiate the low associated space of rules as well. Though the MAP does not guarantee the generativity implicated in the sophisticated methodological falsificationist research program, again a mouthful, it allows for the navigational excess of the temporal origin that is necessary for it to even possibly be generative. So in some sense, the violence that I'm describing here, it doesn't act, it's not necessarily productive or the, cat the catastrophe. But without that, we don't have a space in which we can be productive in some sense. And that, I think that layers back to uh, some of the other things that were said as well. Uh, uh, in keeping with this idea, the phonomorphism instantiated in the mechanized form of the M app also points to the notion of automation the Negaristani seeks and navigate with extreme prejudice. prejudice. Uh, he says in Unintended Resonance with Lakatosh, and the bottom is actually the product of the M app, uh, the space of rules is neither separated from natural laws nor is it isolated from social construction, but nevertheless it is responsible for itself, it is defined by its own irreducible needs, and can only be assessed by itself. The autonomy and the automation of the space of rules respectively lie in the asymptotic autonomy and extractability of its function. Automation, he refers not to iteration, but a bootstrapping of primitive abilities to complex ones. This bootstrapping proceeds in accordance with norms. It does not in proceed in spite of them. This means that Negaristani's automation is defined in terms of two things, mainly its normative relation and the bootstrapping procedure. The violation of tradition exemplified by the catastrophic action of the MMAP, and by tradition I mean all those rules that are being violated in this case uh, in the production of that monstrosity, uh, requires and is defined by the normative utilization of the lexicon, without which there would be no patterns to map. There would be no structure that imparts the sounds in some sense. And even more so, the normative structures described by the mathematical notions it hijacks, mainly the morphism. Um, thus, the M app functions in accordance with norms as per this automaticity. We can find an analogous mapping between the bootstrapping procedure of Negaristani's automation and the M app where the hierarchical relations entailed by the app must also be considered in their own right. Uh, just in case it's not wasn't clear from what I've said so far, the phonetic structure is identical across these two things. So in effect, if you read this or you know how to read it, you will hear the same sounds that the quote is producing, uh, in case that wasn't clear in my extremely dense chatting, chattering. Uh, Negrostani gives us an intuitive philosophical image of the abstract dynamics described as navigating the logics of the space of rules that is performed by the M app. A more explicit and conceptually stabilized definition of the structure that he is pointing to is instantiated in the mathematical object we call a weak infinite groupoid, or a weak infinity groupoid, uh, an object whose mathematical importance in contemporary mathematics was originally characterized by Alexander Grothendieck, which if you're familiar with some of the literature on uh, the philosophy of mathematics, is it an important figure? Um, so one thing I wanted to say quickly, uh, and that's the wonderful picture of Grothendieck. Uh, 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 he's both. He's all. Um, 
I'm going to say, I'm going to talk about how this is hierarchical, but this is not hierarchical. This is not, the hierarchy that I'm talking about is not hierarchical in the political sense. Um, the hierarchies that I'm talking about are very abstract relationships that would be instantiated across all levels of a power structure. So when I say hierarchy, I'm not valencing the political structure of a hierarchy. So a weak infinite groupoid is a structure that preserves identities, inverses, and morphisms up to equivalences of the next hierarchical order, effectively a generalization of the notion of equality up to isomorphism. The hierarchy is created, and that was a quote, uh, the hierarchy is created in virtue of chaining operators. So we can envision a point, the dot, uh, or an object, a path or operator from that point to itself, which is up one order of abstraction or one order in the hierarchical sense that I'm referring to, a path from the path to itself, and then a path from the path to itself, whatever, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, in this way, each of the orders is literally bootstrapped from the structures of the lower orders. I mean, without the objects, there would be no paths between them at, in the hierarchy. The unfolding of each new order up in the hierarchy by instantiating its own identities, its own inverses, and its own morphisms, and thereby also determining the preservation of the lower order relations must be examined in its own higher order terms. So in some sense, uh, the properties of the weak infinite groupoid structure are equivalent to the properties that Negaristani is describing. Now, the why, why instantiate a mathematical object? Well, the, ma the advantage of using such a rigorous construction is that there are implications in what it is or it is not that are productive in terms of how you interact with the, theoretic, the, the conceptual scape that you're working in at that time. Uh, the phonomorphism and MAP, by virtue of using only sonic identities, inverses and morphisms, is consistent with the weak infinite groupoid structure. In other words, it imparts no further or contradictory structure to the mathematical object, though we cannot present, at present say that the phonomorphism necessitates this structure. Uh, it in some sense implies it as one path, possible path to the rigorous definition of many of the features of the operator. For this reason, we'll take it to be equivalent for the rest of the talk. Uh, how am I doing for time? Oh, I'm running out of time, so I gotta go faster. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> go slower. Uh, the M app as an instantiation of the weak infinite groupoid phonomorphism forecasts and blueprints potential trajectories extending from the future in virtue of its bootstrapping structuration. It therefore falls under Negaristani's localized universalizing simulation engine, taking the verb of the universal simulation engine or use. Uh, in order to emphasize the dynamic property of the temporal unfolding of its mathematical structure. We describe the use as localized or localizing instantiation in order to de deny any termination point to its unfolding, hence infinite or the infinity in the infinite groupoid. Um, in our view, all dynamic systems are lossy compressors. They encode, they encode only a reduced subset of the Kantian noumena, Purse's cynicism, or what we here take to be the total infinite groupoid structure. It is the intricacies of this reduced subset that differentiates the continuum into its pluralities or contingencies and simultaneously prevents any ultimate termination. The point here is that the M app, as only one possible stru structure preserving mapping, implies an infinite number of potential mappings, their various combinations, and hierarchical orders. It is vested in its historical trajectory bound in the lexisonic traditions from whence it came, and yet it asymptotically breaks from them while potentiating future violent ruptures within its own structuration. But problematically, the primary form of automation described in the computational literature of which I am familiar is not functionally equivalent to phonomorphism in the way that we're describing here. Negaristani describes this primary mode as rudimentary symbol-based manipulation in opposition to the ramifying procedure, which entails, quote, the schema of the next virtual machine, end quote. The consequence is that all underlying structures are reduced to zero order groupoids, the structure of the natural numbers. In this formalization, all higher paths are trivially reduced to simple reflexivity, and this rudimentary automation makes all higher order structure invisible and all future virtual machines non-existent. The future is severed from its productive implications, and phonomorphisms are just phonetics misconstrued. The consequence is the ubiquity of simple inductive operators. 
example effective modulation, which lack any generativity or only possess trivial reflexivity and result in justificationism, the search for truth. They're restricted to the production of entropic asymmetry, in other words, symmetry breaking in the, as per the previous slide, by chance or primitive noise. The exemplar of non-normative automation. At best, this results in what Negrostani and where is the concept calls the conservative, this isn't a quote, it's paraphrasing, anthropocentrism of an unquestioned privileged frame of reference, here viewed in terms of the lexisonic tradition. At worst, it results in the outright mysticism of an ineffable monism, qua unquestioned dogma or tradition. This collapse to the familiar impedes navigation by stifling epistemic possibility and potentiality as what can be is reduced to what is taken for granted. In contrast, the MAP proposes an ahuman procedurality that gives access to the expansive potentiality of the space of rules. It actively increases the entropy of the lexisonic structure, affecting the navigational excess of the violation of the violating gesture to deracinate the user. In this frame, entropy is defined a la Weissnergrass and Freer, which is that, in terms of the degrees of freedom or parameterized flexibility of the global state, where greater entropy means more accessible paths through the given degrees of freedom. I didn't highlight that, but that's okay. Each global state is defined in terms of a collection of local states, temporal paths, local state temporal paths, so that's one thing, through the space of possible configurations that start from the same initial conditions. Each local paths, each local path, extends up to a given time horizon, which defines the scope of the entropy increase, the further the time horizon, in other words, the more general the resulting global state. The combined effect is that the system relaxes into global states that have a high probability of producing many local states within and up to the given time horizon. Localization, in this sense, captures the intended violence and catastrophe of the MAP at a new level of abstraction. Their extension of potentialities from future possible states further captures the intended functionality of the universalizing simulation engine implemented in the MAP. Quite literally, we can think of the MAP as an instantiation of this causal entropic force, which is performing the selection, that damages the current system in order to expand the number of accessible lexisonic paths, in other words, paths from the lexicon to the field of sound. And back again. I am almost done, actually. Uh, reinterpreting the MAP in terms of this causal entropic force, Alla Weissner, uh, Gross, and Freer, abstracts the procedure well beyond the dogmatic anthropocentrism of the current computational literature. It pitches the hyperstitional operator deeply in the homogeneous landscape of the A-human described by Negrestani. Simultaneously, it frees the associated system of rules from, an a from any human interlocutor and allows the described functionality to extend itself fully into the realm of bootstrapping automation. In other words, if you think about things in terms of a causal entropic force, you don't need a human. You just have the general trend of the system as itself, whatever that means, uh, unfolding as it does. Uh, obviously, I've made the app, so there was a human involved, but. We're, we're, we're being theoretical, we're speculative here. Uh, and finally, the final result of the MAP in phonomorphism is an abstract audio sorcery machine, Ella Fisher, whose sonic fictions, Ella Kojo Ashun, engineer an extension of the possibility space through the projection of virtualities. These virtualities are the potential confusions and misrepresentations resulting from the remapping in the, whoa, these virtualities, <laughs> are the potential confusions and misrepresentations resulting from the remapping in the phonomorphism. At the last tuning speculation, uh, we called for the injection of sonic residuals into the realm of abstraction. Uh, the MAP is a first step towards this effect. And that's all I have to say. Oh. And if anybody wants to actually play with this, uh, it does exist on my website. So if you go to that, if, ideally, if not, everybody goes right to second. <laughs> but if you go to that website, uh, you can enter text and it will spit out what the M app thinks it should be, I guess. Uh, questions, I guess.